Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back. So this is going to be a video. I haven't done a video in a, in a wee bit, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, I had another kid, so you know yourself, it uh, things things happen. So I haven't got a, a ton of time for a hobby, but I've got a few little bits done and I'm going to run through them. Uh, these are going to be in another video and maybe these. So this is just, we'll say, general hobby stuff. Um, so to start off, this is another kind of little critter I made out of uh, polymer clay or super sculpey. And as you can see, there's some airbrush work done here. So I got an airbrush for my birthday that I've been messing around with. I'm not fantastic with it, honestly. I'm still really new to it, but it's got some... I love the kind of blending you can do with it. Uh, so I'm really getting used to that. And the eyes have kind of messed up on uh, pretty drastically here. So I'm going to have to redo those or maybe do some kind of glow effect um, and do some kind of funny frog eye. So this is kind of a little toad... Um, froggy toad squig looking fella uh, I have some work in progress shots of it on my Instagram that I, I'll link down below but uh, just a lot of texture and a lot of fun I like his stumpiness and his kind of toad like back here his kind of cute let yet kind of ugly head at the same time you know he's cute and ugly at the same time and his eyes are actually marble so I thought um, I saw them in a pound shop and I said hey okay perfect and get a bag of those and Make some funny cute little guys so that's how he's looking right at the moment i think i might just do glowing eyes and do some kind of like frog pupils and put some washes on him and he'll be ready to go because i really like the the funny little kind of dog sculpt with a little waggly tail here but he's still kind of a little froggy dog guy i don't know yeah some random little creature so this was uh, i'm actually on the the bill making stuff discord it's really cool discord actually and um, you should check out his channel i'm sure i'm sure you have if you like this kind of stuff but in one of the months, it was like a building channel uh, challenge for um, like a wasteland, like a post-apocalyptic uh, vehicle. But I was on the kind of, um, you know, Studio Ghibli vibe at the time. So I said, oh, cool, look, I'll make a Howl's Moving Castle vehicle. And this is how it's, as far as I got. But as you can see, it's not completed because it kind of turned into a lot of covering things in, in plates of metal and kind of matching it to the movie, but then also making it look... A little bit you know makes sense on a vehicle it's all various like half spheres and stuff like this so i don't know it's a lot of fun and i will finish it up because there's a lot of green stuff like this originally was a um a wheelchair and then i put some kinder surprise top on it and a tube and then some more kinder surprise on the front here and it's all been covered over since but i think it'll be a lot of fun i'm going to build this up on the back with some smoke stacks and little wings and everything and it'll be a crazy kind of gaslands vehicle i'll i'll pop out whenever I get to play but yeah that it's still a work in progress but I, I said I'd include it because honestly there's a fair bit of time gone into it um so next up these are actually miniatures from a kickstarter I got ages ago that I really just bought for the minis because I thought they were cool they were like um you know kind of Asian inspired oriental inspired kind of you know dragons and oni and stuff like this so it was the rising sun game and um, from cool mini or not and this guy I painted up, he is a an ogre. And I had a bit of fun with like, you know, the oil washes and stuff like this. I took a bit of time on him and I'm pretty happy with him. Um, he's not the cleanest, but I mean, as an, an ogre, or I think they're called Onis. Um, yeah, I think he's a pretty intimidating character. And I like the muckiness. I went for the green skin. Did, I had done base layers of this guy with the airbrush. So it was kind of a practice as well. Um, one second, actually. Yeah, this guy or this lady here as well, this lady, this creature was from the same set um, and same thing again. I just did some practice with the airbrush, put on some base layers and then kind of some washes and that. Uh, so I don't know what you'd call this, some kind of weird, what is it? The ring, um, the video, do you remember with the little girl crawling out of the well? But this is all kind of disgusting ghouls and creatures underneath it with big red tongues and the... Uh, the robes on the back but yeah no the airbrush i'm still getting used to it but really I, i'm glad i got it i'm glad i got a decent one um and these guys as well from the rising sun these were some kind of orcs but i just matched uh, switched out their heads and i kind of gave them a new look um just from guys with kind of desert soldiers we'll say and switch out his weapon as well so he looks like some kind of head hunter pretty cool some work with oil washes as well there these guys as well was I think the first things I did with the airbrush, now they're quite mucky, but that's the oil wash I used afterwards. It wasn't the best oil uh, or I didn't mix it very well. So I'm kind of learning as I'm going with these new kind of materials, these new kind of ways of doing things. Um, so I suppose I would recommend giving them a go, especially for kind of more dirtier kind of creatures like the Oni back there. 
but these guys I think they're okay kind of ninja looking fellas and um, this lady here with the big is that pole arm kind of idea quick and easy kind of paint jobs but honestly if you're to do rank and file and I would totally go for airbrush I don't know what's up with this guy with the bask on his head looks like he's from Dark Souls or something but um just painted him just more for fun and this guy this lady is from the rising sun as well but she got, got some conversion work done and um, there's a kind of a skirmish game that i watched some videos on called forbidden sam i think it's called and um, it is kind of very hellscape post-apocalyptic kind of end of the world kind of demons and this kind of stuff that look really interesting i saw people do a lot of uh, conversions for it and i said look i'm gonna try something for that um, I haven't got the game or anything like that, but I don't really see the point because I suppose, like I said at the moment with the children and everything, that I'm not going to have time for that. But I think if I can tip away doing little minis like this, I'll be happy for now. So her weapons were originally like two katanas, but now they're kind of thumbtacks. Um, so I think that worked out pretty well. Uh, I gave her some shoulder pads and some kind of like medieval helmet, really simple. And some feathers here on the back to look like some kind of weird... What's the term? Kind of blanchitsu, kind of dirty, you know, gritty. I, I put some sand on her, added some texture as well. And you see some weathering down here with some powders, with just, you know, chalk powder. Um, so she's pretty cool. Some kind of like dirty assassin or something like this. Uh, next up, so this one, I think I may have showed this ages ago. This is a cockatrice I've been working on little bits and bobs for ages now. I probably featured it in a video at some point. With all different materials like two brush um bristles and milliput spikes and um epoxy scuff spikes and little ball bearings for eyes and stuff like this um so it was built on this really cheap chicken so i think i'm nearly finished this um what i'm gonna do is maybe make this foot a little bit thicker to match this foot if you understand me but apart from that i think it's basically done and the tail is similar to i kind of took inspiration from like the really old drawings and that of, of dragons where they have these big curly tails for some reason so kind of inspiration from medieval artwork and that should be fr quite fun to paint up with the different textures and the feathers and stuff like that uh just run through these guys quickly enough now so this guy is uh reaper bones that i got that uh from the bones four and uh, my bones five is on the way uh, so i said i'd do a little few more kind of like tipping away and trying to finish off some painting on uh on some of the other guys but this guy came out pretty cool i had him painted to a degree and then i said i'm going to do some oil wash on him i think it's after kind of helping uh just put a little bit more depth into him and i'm pretty happy with him now i did some highlights and i think he's good to go and um, this is actually something interesting fly on to something different here was i have a friend in the hobby that i've been on a few discords with and i don't know if he actually has a channel at the time but he has had a great channels in the past uh, the crafting troll it used to be mork and gork um, and he put me on to kind of mixing the idea of mixing milliput with we'll say play-doh or mala to we'll say so you get more out of it so if you do 50 50 you mix the milliput together the two bits of the milliput so you have that bit and then it's same amount of we'll say mala or play-doh and it, it makes it go further we'll say so i just tested it on this um reaper bones model here when i was putting around this 25 millimeter base and it's grand, like it's not rock, rock hard, but it suits the purpose. We'll say if you're trying to fill out some bases and you're going to get a lot more bang for your buck because um, it's so cheap to, we'll say, buy Mala or Play-Doh to, we'll say, lengthen how far your milliput will go if it's for something simple like this. So uh, there's a pretty good tip, to be honest with you. So I tested it on her and then these guys were just something kind of silly. So this is kind of one of the more finished ones. You'll see it's kind of weird crude face and his claws here and his weird body so basically i bought these in a pound shop they were super super cheap these are like 150 for as i say 50 little soldiers right and they're obviously horrible looking stupid little things like this is what they look like right it looks kind of okay possibly the worst sculpt you've ever seen in your whole life <laughs> right but um, I didn't know that when I was buying them, right? So 150, how bad can they be? So I'm just chopping them up and making these kind of weird sand uh, creatures. You know what I mean? Makes sense to me anyway. They could be used for something. A little bit of sculpt on the hands and the on the face. And that's what I'm going to do with these guys. They're all kind of ready to go apart from their face and their hands. You know what I mean? This one, another one here. Just their arms. So basically chopping their arms up and the base up to give them 
weird long neck and kind of claws as well really super cheap and then covered in like pva glue and sand and actually ash as well i've been using a lot of ash because the the texture the particles are so small it looks more like more realistic sand and their bases as well so this is play-doh and epoxy scope mixed together just to go further you know um i think that's nearly it for general hobby stuff i think the last thing is yeah a little bit of terrain here not amazing kind of matches up to my fairy world the bright greens and the you know the kind of classic gray rock gray almost white rock but that's another one another bit of terrain for the, the table that doesn't exist but that's kind of a general hobby update guys um as you can see there's other bits in the back here that i'll do another update video for but yeah cheers for you know saying subscribe no that kind of crack but like i said when i have things done i feel like uh, they're justified to show off or show you um then well that's when i'll do a video but yeah, cheers. I'll catch you in the next one. Good luck.